Reign of Giants is live, the Deerclops has abandonment issues, and my opinion is important too, in this week's edition of Don't Starve News with Jay Beetle. Reign of Giants is now officially in beta. Everyone that owns DST has immediate access to it. Since this is early beta for Reign of Giants, don't expect perfection, especially since the fun has just begun. Numerous bugs have already been identified and the devs are taking note of them as the community makes them aware. Expect misplaced sound effects, mod incompatibility, and rare crashes and glitches. However, since the ROG beta went live, there have been several critical patches that have helped make ROG an already more enjoyable experience. Modi can finally see the invisible ice which was a problem in our Let's Plays previous episodes. As such, Monday we decided to restart the world to ensure maximum compatibility. Check the top right corner of the video for our ROG Let's Play. Aside from bugs, some other important features have either changed or have not been included yet. Small birds can now grow up in the wild. That's right, you can now see them die without having raised them from an egg. For obvious reasons, griefing, the old Bell and Bigfoot are not in DST at the moment. They might not ever make an appearance, who knows? More importantly, who knows a way to balance them that would make them fun, yet not a griefer's ultimate weapon? Anyone? While Weber and Wigfred have made their way into the character lineup, poor old Woody is still being left on the sidelines until the devs can figure out what to do with his night vision. This is why until recently, moles were also staying buried, but have recently been added. Night vision is still a concern. Moles aren't the only animals missing from DST Reign of Giants. There aren't many giants yet in Reign of Giants. The Berger, Dragonfly, and Goose Moose are still missing but they'll show up sometime soon enough. Deerclops is lonely and ready to wreak havoc all winter long. For a list of other Reign of Giants changes, bugs, etc., as well as instructions on how to access the ROG beta, be sure to check out the links in the description below to get you all set up. To keep things lively around here, I'd like to present to you with a new aptly named segment, The Mod Corner. As you might guess, this is a section of the episode where I highlight mods I come across whether they're suggested or I just stumble upon them in the workshop. Today's mod is simple and sweet, and comes to us from a modder known as Rezersheeb. He has a lot of really cool utility mods, but for today, I'd like to show you the Gesture Wheel mod. If you're unfamiliar with it, it does exactly what you'd expect. Rather than having to remember and type out all of those emotes, you can simply click a button and swipe your mouse in the appropriate direction. It's good to have when visiting public servers where you don't want to risk being stabbed in the back by a spear while you type out forward slash happy into chat. And it's as simple as that. As always, if you'd like me to highlight your hard work on a mod, or you want me to take a look at one of your favorite mods, just leave a comment or message and let me know. I can't wait to see what you guys have to show me. While I still have my feelers out for this short little show, I'd like to give my opinion on topics relevant to Don't Starve in another new segment called In My Opinion. Throughout Don't Starve Together's life, people here and there have asked the question, well, what about single player Don't Starve? Don't Starve Together is getting all the attention, but will Don't Starve single player ever get some love again? I currently don't know the answer to that, no one really does, but in my opinion, I just have to ask, why does it matter? Clay's roadmap for DST includes everything that the single player version has, plus the Through the Ages DLC that will add even more exclusive content. It's actively being updated and presumably still selling well. Once Caves and Adventure Mode are fully implemented into DST, there will be absolutely no reason to play the single player version. Why play single player Don't Starve when you could just open a passworded server on DST? I consider it dead both from a development point of view and from a business point of view. When Clay first gave us Don't Starve, they said they'd never implement multiplayer. Time passed, viewpoints changed. They undoubtedly realized that the longevity of the game would dramatically increase if co-op was added. It's not worth their time nor their resources to update a game with a superior predecessor, much less one that is, for all intents and purposes, identical and then some. The two games, while they look the same, are completely different on the inside. They practically had to recode the whole game to bring in multiplayer. It's no simple drag and drop procedure, as you might expect. It is my hope that DST will be updated for a while, even if we must pay for future DLCs. 
Don't Starve is unique, the world is unique, and I believe it can grow a lot more. Plus, that means Modi and I can keep enjoying these Let's Plays we're doing. If you'd like me to discuss where I believe small birds come from, how much hair gel Wilson uses to make his hair stand up like that, or any other controversial topics such as those, please let me know in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this edition of Don't Starve News with Jay Beetle, please leave a like. It helps my channel grow. And subscribe if you're feeling lucky. This has been Don't Starve News with Jay Beetle. I will hopefully see you next week.